Morning, Zach. It's Tuesday. Last week, you asked me, what is your favorite get to know you question? Now, I've only used this question on a couple of people, my wife and PB. Now, names have been omitted from this story because it's a little too embarrassing. PB and I were good friends in college. When I first met her, she was actually the side character. It was her friend that walked up to me and introduced herself and her friend and asked if I wanted to join the Bible study on campus. I said, yeah. And to be honest, in the beginning of our friendship, I was a little scared to talk to her. Well, back then I was young and single and well, she was really pretty. Young Jeremiah just didn't know how to talk to girls. So he had to come up with a plan. The goal, build rapport, trust, and friendship. The strategy, be genuinely interested, sincere, and make her feel important. The method, go to Bible study, of course, use her name often, ask lots of questions, and create inside jokes. And thanks to this planning and the pep talk, it actually worked. Now wait, hold on a second. Does that sound familiar to you, Zach? I found this hiding in the corner of my garage, and holy cow, if you ever pick up a copy, you'll quickly realize that dad was practically preaching out of this thing. Dad spent a lot of time talking to us about soft skills. He gave us small tools to make interpersonal communication easier. Things like smiling, being genuinely interested in people, and making them feel important. As well as calling people by the sweetest sound in the whole world. Their name. And that's when it hit me. Almost every friend that I've ever made in my life was made using the strategy. I didn't have game, I just stole Dale Carnegie's playbook. I felt like I had reduced making friends into a cold and calculated analysis with the aim of collecting conversation, laughs, and hopefully friendship. But that's not the whole truth. Let's go back to the story of PB and I. The moment that took our friendship from good to great was this one question. And it's not one that has the opportunity to present itself. It's a high risk, high reward question. It's vulnerable and it requires a lot of trust, but trust and vulnerability are the things that make bonding experiences. So I asked her, what is your most embarrassing memory? <laughs> and she replied, I peed myself in grade school. At which point I started laughing. That's not funny, she said. <laughs> you gotta tell me yours. And so I admitted, I also peed myself in grade school. It's on the internet now. I'm constantly surprised by others, and it's a beautiful thing. It's wild and ridiculous and crazy how stupid things like being yourself in grade school can build bonding experiences. Dad, with Mr. Carnegie, equipped me with the skills necessary to put myself out there, make friends, and love others. Zach, what is your most embarrassing memory? I'll see you Tuesday.